hello welcome and thank you for joining me today my name is Ezez if today is your first time joining me on blooming time with Ezez today we are going to be doing something slightly different we are going to be talking about some of my favorite books that have helped me to grow spiritually and build spiritual capacity now if today is your first time don't forget to click on the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe if you haven't turn on your notification that way you get notified every time i update or post amazing new videos i'll be right back and we'll get this started right away thank you welcome back so we are going to start by saying a quick word of prayer father we magnify your holy name we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration lord we have come to study holy spirit we ask you will teach us instruct our heart in wisdom we ask for divine revelation of your word this morning in the mighty name of jesus give us a genuine encounter with your word and the spirit in your word this morning oh god lord as we study oh god we will have deep revelation and convictions of your word lord i ask as many who will be watching this that lord you will help them to grow spiritually you will help them to increase in their spiritual capacity and at the end i say take all the glory take all the honor take all the adoration in jesus victorious name i have prayed amen now i know a lot of you uh like to read some people like to read hard copies other people like to read electronic i read both although i prefer the hard copy ones now i've read uh quite a few books last year and this year uh, I think one of my favorite last year I read was A Divine Revelation of the Spirit Realm by Mary Baxter. It was fantastic. This year I got talking uh, with someone and I was talking to her about a yearning to know God. Like that thing in you that just seeks to know more of God. Much more than just religious activity. You want to really know your work with God. How do you work circumspectly with God and she said oh I think you're going to like a W Toza now I have listened to uh, amazing teachers like uh, Apostle Joshua Selman and what makes them amazing for me is that they teach practical like you listen to a sermon or you listen to a message and you can actually take practical tips that you can apply to your life and begin to see yourself grow spiritually another teacher i like is apostle arome osai another fantastic teacher who is very practical we give you the word of god and tell you this is how long you should pray in the spirit this is how often you should pray in the spirit this is how much you should fast those are things that i can relate with in my day-to-day -day life that has helped me to grow spiritually now the book that was suggested to me was the pursuit of god by aw toza but when i went online i saw this one it was a three one it has the pursuit of god the purpose of man and the crucified life so i got this one first and when i read the pursuit of god oh my goodness it's so practical has tips you can actually apply to your life so i've read the pursuit of god more than once i've read the purpose of man now i'm just reading the crucified life and i have gone ahead to purchase quite a few of toza's collection already i probably have 20 if not more and this one i've also read paths to power it's small as you can see so it's really uh, a quick read but most of his books you can't even just rush it because it's so packed so you read a little bit and apply that part you've read Another good one I've read from Toza is How to be Filled with the Holy Spirit. This one again, though a small book, but took time because when you're reading, the goal is not just to say, I've read this book or I've read that book. The goal is to, how does this book apply to me? What can I take out of this book to enhance my spiritual life? So currently, I'm reading The Crucified Life and I'm reading this one on prayer. Amazing book. This one, uh, I'm almost uh, maybe halfway done. And then another one I've read is um, The Dangers of a Shallow Faith. Amazing book. I lent it out to someone and the same thing. She has testified. It's really amazing. So to get to this book, The Pursuit of God, we're just going to review 
chapter one of it now this one i got off of amazon you can get it i'm not going to put uh, uh okay i might just put a link uh on my in the description box for those of you who want it and when you when you get this book i want you to actually start from the introduction don't skip and go to chapter one because the introduction shows you uh the the person who edited the book is james l uh, snyder it shows you how he came across the pursuit of God, how somebody gave it to him and was pestering him. Have you read it? Have you read it? Have you read it? And he just kept putting it off. And the day he read it, oh my God, he got an encounter. And so from that day, he has been recommending it. Now, when you look at the introduction, it tells you how to read the pursuit of God, that you should read it with a longing in your heart, with a yearning in your heart, a longing to know God. So don't just read it casually, like you're reading a newspaper. You have to actually read it with a strong desire to know God. The spirit of longing. I don't know if you had that in you. Like for me, when I moved to North America over a decade ago, I had that longing in me, that yearning in me that wasn't satisfied by just going to church. So I began to sort to know him. I was looking for books to read. I came across people like uh, Dr. Mensa Ottobill, amazing teacher. And I listened to over 200 of his messages on podcasts. But that yearning was just still there. Until 2018, I came across Apostle Joshua Selman. Mm, perfect. And then that yearning was like, the more you know, the more you get, the more that hunger is there. And so then I came across uh, A.W. Toza, and it's just amazing how God is able to really give us as we hunger and thirst after him. So you want to read this book with a strong desire and a strong determination. That's what the introduction is saying here. To know God. He says you should come in the attitude of devotion, in silence and humble expectation. So don't just read it as one of my to-do lists. You should be expectant. Read it as a devotion. Like this is the place of fellowship. This is the place of intimacy. Hallelujah. He said this book is for a person who thirsts after God. Never read more than a chapter a day. That is so true. Sometimes I have read one chapter and stayed there for two, three days. And it comes with prayer points at the end of his chapter. So I have read a chapter and just keep meditating on it. Extrain my life with it to see areas I need to change. And it has really, really blessed me immensely. He said this book is to be studied, is to be meditated on, mark it, pray over it, and return to it as often as possible. So if you see, I have marked so many areas in it because these areas just speak out to me. And sometimes I've had to take pictures and send to some people and just say, can you see how amazing this part is? Hallelujah. So I want uh, we're going to move quickly now because I don't want to take uh, too much time. And from there, it goes over to the preface. Again, spend time to read uh, the preface. It says that we all have a hunger that must be recognized by everyone. So if you're a leader, recognize that your followers have this hunger and longing to know God. And if we do not satisfy that hunger, or if we do not feed that hunger, then people will just get frustrated over time. So moving on... Uh, so it says today there is no lack of Bible teachers. So we have Bible teachers who can teach the word of God. He said, but not every one of them is entwined into this satisfying the hunger in the students as they were of knowing God. So we must be able to teach, disciple and mentor people properly so that they can actually grow spiritually. Now going to chapter one. Chapter one says following hard after god hallelujah and the lesson text there is from psalm 63 verse 8 it says my soul followeth hard after thee thy right hand had upholded me my soul followeth hard after thee and thy right hand had upholded me following hard after god and then it starts by telling us what it means to follow hard after God. He says we pursue God because and only because he has first put an urge. Amen. 
and urge within us that spurs us to the pursuit. So that is why it says salvation is by grace. So no man can boast about it. God extends his love to you while you are still an unbeliever. He extends grace to you. Come and be saved. We are saved by the grace of God. And now when you are saved, God deposits a yearning in you. He deposits an urge in you. And that urge spurs you to pursue God. As you yield to that urge, you see that the hunger, the thirst, spurs you to pursue God. Hallelujah. He says, No man can come to me, says our Lord, except the Father which hath sent him draws him. And it's by this very pre pre uh, prevenient drawing that God takes from us every vestige of credit for the act of coming. So God draws you. God is calling you. God is calling me. He's waiting for our response because he has given us a will. He will not force himself on us. So God is calling you today, even as he's calling me. And it's our part now to respond to that call of God. So he called by giving us his son. That is not the end of the story. Your being born again is actually the beginning of your new birth. It's the beginning of your Christian work. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to be skipping some part of it. So, going down here, it says, As the as the deer or as a heart panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come to appear before God? This is deep calling unto deep. And the longing heart, only the longing heart, we understand it. That place I read is Psalm 42, verse 1. It says, My soul, as the deer panted after the water brook, so my soul thirsts after the Lord. And, and, and Tozer is saying, Only the heart who, who has that longing will understand it. Because you might read a scripture and just go crazy with it. And the next person is like, well, I read it, there was nothing. Because they are not getting any any revelation in that word. They are not getting any, they are not having an encounter with the word of God. Remember, the word of God and the spirit of God have to come together for you to have the encounter. So if you are reading this book or reading your Bible as just words, then you won't have an encounter. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe upon those words, the word and the spirit together will create or give you that encounter amen now it says the modern scientist has lost god amidst the wonders of his world we christians are in real danger of losing god amidst the wonders of the world we have almost forgotten that god is a person and as such can be cultivated as any person can so we must cultivate intimacy with the holy spirit we must cultivate our spiritual work we must cultivate fellowship with the almighty god god the father god the son and god the holy spirit you know god created us in this world gave us things to help ease our life those things should not replace god or take over the essence of god in our life now looking down again it says religion so far as it is genuine is in essence the response of the created personalities to the creating personality god now this is life eternal that they might know the all the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent that is from uh, john 17 3. it says true and genuine religion is the response of the created personality now the children of god our response to our creator that is what genuine relig religion should be it's a relationship amen he said, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. To have a relationship with God, not a relationship where we just come to ask, you know. Examine your, your prayer life. If your prayer life is all about asking and warfare, then it's still not balanced. Because there's a dimension of intimacy. There's a dimension where you build spiritual capacity, where you cultivate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So these three dimensions should be shown in your prayer life. Amen. So God is a person. Now, just to paraphrase, and in the deep of his mighty nature, he thinks we enjoy 
feels love and everything just like he has put in us so we have these feelings so that we can know how god feels as well remember we are created in the image and in the likeness of god now he said this intercourse between god and the soul is known to us in conscious personal awareness so our soul as we cultivate intimacy or intercourse as it is between god and the soul of man that is what we get in the place of fellowship hallelujah now i'm gonna uh, keep going now uh it says the moment the spirit has quickened us to a life uh in regeneration our whole being senses its kingship to god and lifts up in joyous recognition so the moment you give your life to jesus the moment you believe in your heart and you are set you confess in, with your mouth that jesus is lord you are ready to repent and have him as your lord and savior your spirit lifts up in recognition it's there's joy within your spirit hallelujah he said this is the heavenly birth without which no one can see the kingdom of god so if you want to see the kingdom of god you must be born again you must give your life to jesus you must accept him as your lord and personal savior amen it is however not an end but an inception like i said before for now begins the glorious pursuit when you give your life to god it's not a time to go relax and say well i've given my life to god now i'm good i'm gonna make heaven no it's actually the start is the inception of your walk with God is the start of your pursuit of God hallelujah now your heart is the heart happy exploration of the infinite riches of the Godhead this is where we begin I say but where we stop no man has yet discovered so you're being born again is the beginning of your experience but where you are going to stop no man has yet discovered hallelujah to have found god and still to pursue him is the soul's paradox of love of love scorned indeed by the too easily satisfied religionists but justified in happy experience by the children of the bonny heart so the pursuit of god is something that you should genuinely 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 cry unto the holy spirit to help you have hallelujah now another place here says david's life was a torrent of spiritual desire we see david express his desire to know god and so also the apostle paul i'm just going to quickly read a quick excerpt here david's life was a torrent of spiritual desire and his psalms rings with the cry of the seeker and the glad shout of the finder hallelujah when you read throughout the psalms you will see david's yearning his cry to know god and the the, the glad shout when he finds god paul also confessed the man, main spring of his life to be his burning desire after christ apostle paul now he says that i may know him hallelujah was the goal of his heart and to do this paul sacrificed everything yet i'm going to quit a quote now from philippians 3 8 to 10 yet doubtless and i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but refuse that i may win christ if a man like apostle paul yearns to still know god after he has known him this much you and i do not have an excuse so that yearning to know god will ultimately help us to begin to walk in line uh, to grow spiritually now i'm just going to quickly uh, finish this i'm just taking out bits and pieces in this chapter so it says i want deliberately to encourage this mighty longing after god the lack of it has brought us to our present low esteem so if we do not long if we do not come with a seeker's heart it just brings us at, at a, a, a level where we, we plateau where we are stagnant and that is not just affecting us it affects the body of christ the body becomes stagnant because that hunger and desire is not there okay he said this stiff and wooden quality about our religious life is a result of our lack of holy desire complacency is a deadly foe for all spiritual growth acute desire must be present or there will be no manifestation of christ in his people we must always cry to have that desire to know christ that is when we see the power of god manifested hallelujah so he waits to be wanted 
so bad that with many of us, he waits so long, so very long in vain. I pray for you this morning, as many the Lord has been knocking, has been waiting, that the Lord will not wait in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, uh, I'm just going to quick uh, skip now. It says, um, now I'm just going to come to the end of the chapter so we can look at the prayer. Now, it says, if we could find God amid all the religious externals, we must first determine to find him and then proceed in the way of simplicity. Now, to know God should not be complicated. Proceed in the way of simplicity. The Bible says that as newborn babes, so proceed as a baby. We must simplify our approach to him. We must strip down to essentials and they, they will be found to be blessed few. We must put away all efforts to impress. So to know God is not just, let me quickly read this so I can go show off. We must come back to the place of simplicity and come with guileless candor of childhood. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we must come as a child, ready, inquisitive, hungry to know him. If we do this without that, God will quickly respond. Hallelujah. Now, um, I'm just going to go now to the last one. He said, the man who God has, sorry, the man who has God for his treasure has all things. Amen. Has all things in one. Many ordinary treasures may be denied him. Okay. Or if he's allowed to have them, the enjoyment of them will be so tempered that they will never be necessary to his happiness. When you have God for your treasure, you have all things in one. Or if he must see them go one after one, he must scarcely feel a sense of loss. For having the source of all things he has in, in one, all satisfaction. When you have God, you have all the treasures in one. You have all satisfaction. But when you pursue other things first, your joy is always short-lived. It's always temporary. But when you pursue God your joy is eternal. Your joy is permanent. It says here, all pleasure, all delight. Okay, sorry. It says, whatever he may lose, he has actually lost nothing. For he now has it all in one. And he has it purely, legitimately, and forever. Hallelujah. When we pursue God, we get God, we know him, we have everything we can ever desire matthew 6 33 says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and every other thing will be added now let me go quickly over to the prayer now it says oh god i have tasted thy goodness we're going to end this by with this we're going to use this as our closing prayer oh god i have tasted thy goodness and it has both satisfied me and made me thirst for more I am painfully conscious of my need for further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire, O oh God. The triune God, I want to want you. I want you to say that prayer quickly. That, O oh God, I have tasted thy goodness. And it has both satisfied me and made me thirst for more. Say, Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, O oh God, for the thirst. Thank you for the hunger. Lord, I am painfully conscious of my need for further grace. Lord, I need more grace from you, O oh God. I need more grace from you, O oh God. The grace to walk with you. The grace to hunger, to thirst after you. He says, I am ashamed of my lack of desire, O oh God. The triune God. I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. Lord, I long to be filled with longing. Fill me, O oh God, with a longing after you. He said, I thirst to be made more thirsty still. O oh God, create in me a thirst that is never satisfied. I thirst, O oh God, to be made more thirsty after you in the mighty name of Jesus. And it says, begin in mercy a new work of love within me. 
Father, Lord, have mercy upon us. Oh God, we pray. Begin in mercy a new work of love. The love that responds to the love of the Father. The love that responds to the hand of love you have stretched to me, oh God. Lord, begin a new work of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, a new work of love. Begin in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Say to my soul, oh God, rise up, my love my fair one and come away amen then give me the grace to rise up and follow thee from this misty land where i have wandered so long in jesus name amen father give me the grace to rise and follow you when you call give me the grace to rise and open when you knock oh god give us the grace this morning the grace to rise and follow thee oh god father we pray in the mighty name of jesus thank you father for your faithfulness we say take all the glory take all the honor take all the adoration in jesus victorious name we have prayed amen i hope this has blessed you listen to it over and over again if you want to get the book is the pursuit of god this one i have is a three in one the pursuit of god the purpose of man and the crucified life by god's grace i'm trusting i'll be able to review the 10 chapters in this book it's amazing take time to reflect on these things i've discussed about chapter one and chapter two is talking about the blessedness of possessing nothing. So by God's grace, we're going to be reviewed, reviewing that. Make sure you watch out. Don't forget to show your support. Please click on the like. Leave me a comment in the comment section. If you have a prayer request, leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to share this with your friends. Turn on your notification. Until next time when I bring you another amazing episode. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you.